Hello, welcome to the lecture on mechanical equilibrium. Very tough to say. Say that 10 times fast, mechanical equilibrium. There are two types of mechanical equilibrium. There is static equilibrium and dynamic equilibrium. Static equilibrium is where the forces balance and there is no movement. Dynamic equilibrium is where the forces balance and there is movement. For instance, let's say, let's say Mamet and Jane are pulling on a rope, yet there's no movement. They're pulling with equal force. Therefore, they would be in static equilibrium. If, let's say, Mamet gets the upper hand and applies a greater force than Jane and there's movement to the right, then Jane applies a force that's equal to Mamet, but the movement continues to the right. That is dynamic equilibrium. Let's see what that means. Well, you can see that the first two examples here, where you have 15 newtons to the right, 5 newtons to the right, you can see that that's not neither static nor dynamic equilibrium. But the one on the bottom could be static. In other words, you have two forces pulling on this hockey puck or whatever it is, and there's no movement. But what happens if there is, mo there is movement and the five newtons on the right is pulling, but five newtons of friction is pulling the other way, and there's movement. That would have a zero newtons uh, uh, net force, and you would have a, a dynamic equilibrium. Here's another example of dynamic equilibrium, where the student is hanging from the ring, and she's 300 newtons. If you put two vertical strands up there, I emphasize two vertical strands, each one would be half if you have two of the weight of the person hanging from the rings. Now if I increase that angle where there is a large angle between one of the cords supporting the student and the vertical, <clears throat> the tension in the cord is no longer half of the student's weight. It will increase dramatically. <clears throat> Excuse me. And let's let's look at an example of that, where we have some data to put in. Let's say you have 10,000 newton weights pulling straight down. You have this make-believe line three, and you have two of them actually, because you have one for each string. Remember, it's half of the weight, so each each vertical make-believe line would be half. So the question is, even though it's not listed here, would be what is the, it is listed, what is the tension in T and what is the length of line three? Well, let's do the tension first. The tension would be, well, 55 degrees would be the angle. It would be cosine. So it would be cosine 55 equals 5,000 over T and you'd solve for T. Now, what you're gonna find is the tension is almost equal to the load. If it were 60 degrees, that's a, that's a hint for the next test, it would be equal to the load if the angle were 60 degrees instead of 55. You can see at 55, it's very close to the load. It's 8,717 newtons. And that would be uh, on, each, on each cord. So that's pretty dramatic. You have over 17,000 newtons of stress of tension in both cords holding up a 10,000 newton object uh, and as that angle changes so will the tension. Now let's find the length of line three. We see that the entire cord or the entire length across the ceiling is 40 meters each length L1 and L2 would be both equal to 20 meters and we plug in and we find the length of L3 to be 14 meters. That's the sag. Question is, what happens to that sag? What happens to the tension in, in T when that sag becomes less? That's something you should research. What happens to the tension as that sag becomes less and less or greater and greater? So, this is a summary of the problem, 8,717 newtons and 14 meters is the length of the sag.
The circle is made of 360 degrees. Complementary would add to 90, supplementary would add to 180. 2 times 180 is 360. Don't forget beta, alpha, gamma equal 360 degrees. Here's an example of static equilibrium. You have gravity pulling down, the tail pushing up. And the book is at rest. The forces up and down are equal, therefore static equilibrium. Here's another example where both people, both persons are pushing on a crate with the same force and you have static equilibrium. Here are two vectors, 12 kilometers and 8 kilometers at the given angles. This should be second nature to you now. And remember that all angles we're going to solve relative to the x-axis, but either way you could do it. It all makes sense. So you break each vector down to its corresponding components, and then you add the components, do the arctangent of the sum of, x of y and x and the Pythagorean theorem, and you get your resultant vector here. It's going to be 12 kilometers and 49 degrees north of east. The next couple of slides show the concept of friction, that all surfaces have irregularities that can impede the progress of motion. Now if you're on a bicycle on a road and you're pedaling and you're going at a constant speed, you're actually applying a force to the bicycle simply to overcome friction. That's why you're going at a constant speed. You need to overcome the friction. So the friction, friction is caused by an irregularity in the surface on which motion is occurring creating a resistance or an opposite force to the forward force of motion. So friction will play an important part in this chapter. Here I have some fluid dynamics. When the upward force is greater than the downward force, you have something ascending, you have hovering, and you have sinking depending upon the forces involved. This is a, a force table where you can test your vectors and to see whether or not they are in mechanical equilibrium. So you would set up your vectors relative to the equilibrant and you would measure the equilibrant and then set your vectors up on the board accordingly. In flight, you have four vectors. You have lift and weight, you have drag and thrust that will keep a jet in mechanical equilibrium and that would be dynamic equilibrium. Here I have several downward forces, some upward forces, and the upward forces and the downward forces would be equal. Therefore, you have equilibrium, mechanical equilibrium of one form or another, either dynamic or, uh, or uh, static. Here I have the normal force, which is the upper force, the downward force, which is the weight. So you're pushing, you're overcoming the friction that is not in equilibrium. Here I have uh, this is appears to be the person pulling this, if that's the vector analysis, they would be accelerating, and that would not be in uh, dynamic equilibrium. Acceleration, acceleration is a sign that you are in, you are not in mechanical equilibrium. Here I have the weight pulling down, uh, the chair pushing up, and that's mechanical equilibrium, that's static equilibrium. Here I have a person going up. It says you have acceleration, so the upward forces are greater than the downward force. If that's true, that is not mechanical equilibrium. Here I have a student leaning against a brick wall. The brick wall is pushing at the same rate or at the same amount that the student is pushing. That's mechanical equilibrium. Here I have a person standing. The floor pushes upward on the person. The gravity pulls down on the person. That is going to be static equilibrium because the floor and the person are equal. Here I have a quick example where I have two vectors. I have 80 kilometers per hour north and I have 60 kilometers east and then I have the resultant.
Here I have two sumo rec wrestlers. So they're constantly changing from static equilibrium to dynamic equilibrium and then in and out of those things depending upon whether or not they're going at a constant speed or not moving at all. Here's the American football, also a combination of dynamic and static equilibrium. Always remember that most of nature goes in and out of static and dynamic equilibrium. It's static sometimes, it becomes dynamic. To go from static to dynamic, you have to have a break in equilibrium and then it goes back into dynamic. So really the course, the mechanics, the first half of the course is the study of some form of mechanical equilibrium, either static or dynamic, or changing from one to the other and back again. Uh, good luck.